Plural Noun Proposition Papers. Today's sample is going to be from our debate lectures and our debate classes. Uh, our debate classes are uh, one of the critical elements of developing critical thinking skills, being able to clearly articulate verbally, be able to use speech as a form of communication, and really being able to be kind of on your toes when, when we're when we're challenged by opposing viewpoints. There's no reason why we can't have disagreements. There's no reason why any topic should be off limits. You have an opinion, I have an opinion. You should be able to share your point of views without arguing, without being you know hostile towards one another. It's, it's one of the things that we've really gotten away from and that's because when you tell people from a postmodern view, well, there is no real absolute objective right, which is ironic because when I look at people yelling and screaming at me, telling me I have to believe what they believe, it sure does seem to me like they have an objective point of view. And so we want to teach you how to process all of this information. And there's a lot of information. There's a lot of different things that you have to process. And so we want to create debates. We want to create all kinds of debates. We can talk about what the best ice cream is. We can talk about what the best uh, sports team is. We can talk about what the best movie is. It, it all starts there and just seemingly, um, you know, fun and gentle things. But then when we start to get into uh, political positions or religious ideology convictions, then it gets more serious. And, and we really want you to know how to process this information, how to come up with, with true facts, with true data. See, we were being raised in, an, in a postmodern age that tells us, well, again, there is uh, no objective truth. It's all subjective. So the reality is all you have to do is spew out any kind of answer. Well, we know that's not true. We just know it's not true because we see people every day debating and arguing and having disagreement and there's no shift. And so that's what we're looking at. We, we want to be winsome. We want to be people of influence. We want to be able to share our ideas, change the world, change people from doing harm to themselves to, to blessing themselves. Ultimately, as Christians, we want to transform lives, right? We want to transform hearts. And so the idea of us just being right, well, that's not our goal. Our goal is to win the verdict. Our goal is to be winsome. Our goal is to shift and move mindsets. Well, that takes harder work. And so in the world, not only do we have our, our personal convictions, let's say spiritually, but you may have to give a formal presentation. You may have to make sales. You may, you may have to ask a father for your girlfriend's hand in marriage and you need to present your, your, your point. And maybe he's not, he's fine with you getting married, but he wants you to wait three years. Is the debate over? Or can you in a clear and concise way present your argument so you never know how a debate is going to um uh, you know reveal itself but we do know that in the process of life we will be debating over and over and over again so we want to use our plural noun proposition uh, paper format in order to teach you keep in mind in a structured debate system which is what these papers are for. These are, today we're talking about a structured debate and creating several plural noun proposition papers in order to make up your whole debate. And so you think, oh, whoa, that's, that's overwhelming. I, how could I ever get into a debate? How could I ever get into a, a conversation? I don't know what they're going to say. I don't know what I'm going to say. And it, it's, again, it's, it's, fairly simple if you're properly prepared. How are you properly prepared? Well, you develop a series of plural noun propositions, plural noun proposition papers. Remember, they can be one-point papers, they can be three-point papers, they can be four-point papers. 
when you're doing a debate, traditionally you have, okay, here's my opening. Your opening is a plural noun proposition paper. Then the other person's going to have an opening. Then you're going to have some kind of follow-up, or maybe it's a rebuttal. That's another proposition paper is your rebuttal. And then the other person's going to have a rebuttal. Then you're going to have like a, a, a affirming uh, a time of affirmation or another time of rebuttal or another, another time where it's just like your slot. That's another plural noun proposition paper. And then finally they say, okay, you have your final two minutes to uh, draw your conclusions. That's another plural noun proposition paper. And so if you do it that way, if you think of it that way, it really is quite simple. And so let's take a look at what that looks like. Again, first, we're going to begin with, um, you know, develop your, your or determine your plural noun proposition. Uh, what, what is your proposition? Uh, what is the point of this, this speech or this debate? Uh, you, you need to know what it is. Okay, today we are going to be debating whether or not uh, we should have gun rights. Today we're going to be debating uh, between pro-choice and pro-life, right? Today we're going to be debating whose sports team is the best. So determine the proposition of the paper. Now you, you compose your outline, especially in a debate, you're going to have to have supporting evidence. You're going to have to have supporting facts. But don't forget to have your illustration in your story. Illustration and story are, are powerful uh, in, in persuading people because that's the point of the debate. The point of the debate is to win the argument, not, not angry argument, just to win the discussion, to win the verdict. You're going to have to have a good introduction. Today, I am presenting my paper on why I believe sports are essential for young men. Today, I'm presenting my paper for why I believe music is essential for young men. So, formulate a conclusion. As I said, the three most powerful reasons why all young men should do music, do sports, are dot, dot, dot. See how that works? We're going to start with our Cornell notes. One of the things you want to keep in mind, especially with debates, is okay, so I'm going to be getting into a debate today, and we're going to be talking about, um, you know, the, the benefits of, let, let's say, the benefits of a Christian education. Okay, what are the benefits of a Christian education? And so you start writing down on a piece of paper, well, you know, okay, here's, here, here's some benefits of Christian education. But then you're going to have to think about, okay, well, what about the benefits of a public school education? Because that's what your opposition is going to be presenting, right? And so in your notes, you are now already formulating, well, I better have two kinds of lines of thinking. One is my position. The other one is their position. It's an us versus them. So your Cornell notes are, are very important. Then you start brainstorming, right? Okay, what are your views? What are your supporting views for, for why you believe Christian education, biblical education is superior to a public secular education? Again, start writing down what is the opposition's view? What, what, why does the opposition believe that a public school system is better? Now, we've got a nuance. We've got non-believing parents, secular point of view, secular ideology that want to send their kids to public school, and we have Christian parents that believe it's okay to send their kids to public school. So we have opposition, but our opposition is kind of in, in two forms, so you got to think about that. That's why thinking about the opposing view is very, very important in debate, because that's what you're debating. As much as you're debating your ideas, you're also challenged by the opposing view and then you better have a section in your brainstorming and your notes that's okay these are the facts these are the facts the indisputable facts that we cannot get away from we can't get away from the fact that so many christian kids walk away from their faith turn their back on their christian values 
when they go to a public university. That's a fact. The opinion and, and the proposition is why? Why is that? Is that because they never had a good biblical foundation in their high school, uh, junior high, and elementary years? That's the debate. That's the argument, right? So what are the facts? What are, what's the data? The goal of the course then is to clearly articulate your view, your position using the, the, the data or the topic that uh, uh, is being presented and then to do it also in a persuasive way. This is not just, okay, I'm, I'm here today to report on, on why pro-life is, uh, is, is my point of view. No, th this is a persuasive paper. There is no Im more important political topic than pro-life. Okay, right out of the gate, it's like, okay, this guy's all in, right? Okay, you're going to have to identify the key issues. The key issues. What are the key issues? What are the key issues when we're talking about, let's just start with education. Why do you go to school? What is the point of education? Do we even know anymore? See, we've been so clouded by the nonsense that public school uh, puts on us that most parents don't even know why you go to school. You go to school to learn how to read, to go how to write, and to go to learn how to add. Reading, writing, arithmetic. That's why you go to school. Okay, so all the other stuff be, be, becomes ancillary. Okay, it becomes extracurricular. It becomes a bonus to, okay, well, uh, to be a more well-rounded person, I believe maybe you should learn some other languages. To be a more well-rounded person, we believe maybe you should read literature. Okay, but the essentials, the core essentials have not changed. And the problem is, is, is so many public schools spend so much time on the extracurricular that our kids are graduating, they don't know how to read and write. Now, that's a shame. What, what, what a tragedy. So we want to identify the key issues. One of the key issues that Christian families have against public schools is they are not biblical. They are anti-Christian. Goes back to Psalm 1. You're, you're literally going to a place where, where the wicked, the sinful, and the mockers are teaching your children. Where the curriculum is, is, is wicked it's deceptive, it's anti-American, it's anti-conservative, and it's definitely anti-God, Bible, Christian. And so when we look at science then, when we look at science from a, a non-Christian perspective, if you don't understand the beginning, then you don't understand science. And so that would be another key identifier in the issue. We look at what's being taught uh, from a Christian worldview, we look at what's being taught from the Christian perspective scientifically, we look at what's not being taught, reading, writing, arithmetic, we look at what is being taught, sex education, um, liberal, a lot of liberalism, and so there are a lot of different uh, reasons why we would uh, ident or identify why we believe in a, in, a, in a Christian education. We're not getting all into that right now. This is just an example. So again, what are the core arguments? Well, the core arguments are, well, what about all the, the um, what about sports? What about drama? What about the 2,000 course offerings that a private uh, Christian school doesn't offer? What are your evidence? What are your facts? What, what do you have for evidence and facts? Uh, are Christian schools safer? than public schools? Are they safer from fights? Are they safer from uh, sinful vice? Uh, that stuff is there, but on a much uh, a lower scale. So what are your supporting evidence? What about stories, illustrations? And, and so that might come up in your, in your debate. Ultimately, and here's the key to the debate, and this is why the plural noun proposition is so important. Because you may already be lost just in me kind of rambling, throwing out a bunch of different ideas. Public school versus Christian school, right? Or Christian education more appropriately. And where are we? That's why you need to come up with your three-point plural noun proposition. The reason why I believe 
in a biblical, biblical education is, number one, an education without God is not an education. Number two, teaching science without an understanding of God the Creator is not real science. Number three, the social relationships found at public school are damaging. So that's just three that I came up, came up with. There, there's tons of other ones. Um, now you have to come up with your proposition statements. What is your, your, your sentence? So that was just a brainstorm kind of idea. Smooth it out. Come up with three great statements to support your, your proposition. This is what you're going to be debating on, right? So you, you write this out. Uh, I believe a biblical education is, is real. Well, what does that mean? You, you, you got to write that out in a, in a better way than that. Remember, the debate has a flow. <clears throat> you're taking turns. So <clears throat> your first turn is presenting your argument, presenting your introduction. Okay, and usually you have like four minutes in a speech. So a four-minute speech is like, hey, you're, you're going to need a page, a page and a half of a plural noun proposition. You're going to need to be organized. You're going to be need, need to be clear and have a, have a powerful introduction. Today we're talking about something that is absolutely vital to the success of America's future. Okay, there, there's the beginning of, a, of an introduction. Today we want to evaluate two different educational systems. That's more of a vanilla way. Okay, and so, you know, using here as an example, up here, Psalm 1, spiritual outlines. Um, okay, I'm going to say, do not walk with the wicked. You're going to delight in the law of the Lord. And you're going to med meditate day and night, right? And so if I were going to be debating why I believe, let's say, a Christian education is, is absolutely essential, and I wanted to use Psalm 1 as, as my anchor, I believe Christian education is absolutely essential for these three reasons. One, the Bible commands us not to walk in the counsel of the wicked. Number two, we are to delight in the law of the Lord. And three, we're to meditate on it day and night. And the only way that I can honor God's word is through a Christian biblical education, not a public secular one. There you go. Uh, then <clears throat> the opposing view is going to going to give their, their proposition and <clears throat> and they're going to speak. Okay, you give them their turn. Well, now it's your turn again. So you're going to take a next step, a deeper level. I, I talked about Psalm 1. Psalm 1 was kind of my introduction. Now I'm going to actually get into more uh, detail about specific, uh, let's say, offerings or what is school about. And so start to ask questions, right? Well, what about how are we viewing sports and extracurricular ideas or maybe vocational schools? How, do, how does that play into a Christian education versus a public school education? Is there, is there a connection there at all? What about is, is certification or accreditation, uh, awards and rankings, is, is that important to you? Because I know you know that the, the public school is going to make a big deal out of sports, extracurricular education, uh, Votech schools, certifications, accreditation. They're going to make a big deal out of their teachers being certified and, and 15 years experience, right? So in your second part of your debate, you're going to need to address those pillars, right? You, you know those are going to come up. And so now you may want to talk about, well, what are the values of a, a Christian education is, and then address from a, okay, how are you... How are you combating the sports thing? Well, I would say from a homeschooling perspective, my children have the benefit of being able to participate in more sports, in more curricular activities, and in more vocational uh, extracurricular ideas because we have more time and we have more financial resources to spend because we didn't go to public school and because we didn't spend on private Christian school. Instead, we chose to homeschool. Uh, certifications, accreditations, uh, you're probably going to have to address that in your debate. That's what a debate is. Is that important? Well, who has the greatest authority in the world? Uh, a teacher or God? And so what, how, what, is, what is accreditation? Do you even know what accreditation is? Do you even know what the process of accreditation is? 
it gets thrown out a lot, but uh, do people really understand it? So <clears throat> in your second plural noun proposition paper, in your uh, affirmation or rebuttal, in your debate, that's how you have to put together a paper, a paper to argue against the opposing viewpoint. Then you, you let, let's say in, a, in, a, in another section you have, you're going to have to develop in your plural noun proposition um, a, a direct response to examination. Okay, um, you've been challenged. You've been challenged by the sports. You've been challenged by the extracurricular, by the, you know, the accreditation, the awards. And then you're going to have to come back with, okay, this is why we believe that a Christian education is more important. And you're shifting from their argument back to yours, right? There's, there's disadvantages to playing in their sandbox. And so you want to get back to, well, these are or our top three reasons. We get to develop the man of God. We get to do extracurricular hands-on activities that they don't get to do at school. We get to control our schedule in a more flexible way. We get to pick and choose the courses that we want to, to use, not what the state has mandated and required. So that's uh, kind of an example there. And then finally, your final plural noun proposition paper, let's say in a debate. And this is just a sample of a debate. There's a lot of different debate structures, but you would come up with a, a plural noun conclusion proposition. So you're going to drive home your, your final points. You want to win the verdict. You know, look, Proverbs you know, 23, 7 says, So a man thinketh he liveth. So what goes into your mind is what's going to come out of your heart. If you spend all day long in a secular education, that is going to do damage to you. Okay, that's part of your concluding remarks. The Bible instructs us to study like the Bereans, to examine things, to examine truth, to see if it's so. We want to be like Bereans, and the only way we could be like Bereans is if we're cross-referencing uh, history and information with a biblical perspective. That's why Christian education is essential. Or Deuteronomy 6 will say, look, God has been clear from the beginning that we are supposed to raise our children in the law, in the statutes, in the precepts of the Lord. We're to write them on their hearts and on their minds day and night when we walk, when we sit, when we sleep, when we talk. And so the only way that we can control that kind of teaching is by, let's say, homeschooling kind of a thing. So those would be kind of some of your just ideas for your plural noun proposition. But I hope you get the idea that even and especially in a debate system, you are using your plural noun propositions as your 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 benchmarks guidepost. So just think of it as in, in this way. This is my introduction plural noun pro proposition. This is my 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 first rebuttal. Okay. This is my second rebuttal, and then this is my conclusion. And so all those different pages then are different aspects that build up your debate. Now. It's the same process when a teacher says, look, we, I want you to do a 20 page paper and everybody gets all scared and shocked. It's like, it's still a three point thesis. It's still a three point proposition outline. It's just expanded. You, you have to have more supporting data, more story, more illustration, more debate, more definition. See how that works? And so that is our our general overview of plural noun proposition uh, papers using kind of the debate format.